This week's announcement from the US that marine archaeologists believe they've found the wreck of HMS Endeavour put the spotlight back on Australia's maritime history. When Captain Cook arrived here on the Endeavour in 1770, ship navigation was in the middle of a clock-driven revolution. A new exhibition at the Australian National Maritime Museum in Sydney explores that massive change. It's called Ships, Clocks and Stars, The Quest for Longitude. The 18th century had seen a fierce contest between clocks and mathematics in the battle to work out where a ship was on the ocean. It was won in the end by a clockmaker called John Harrison. Rory McAvoy is curator of horology at London's National Maritime Museum at Greenwich. He's brought out some of that museum's great treasures for this exhibition, and we began by talking about Captain Cook. On his first voyage, on on the Endeavour, um, he's not carrying a, a marine timekeeper. He's using the tables that are almost perfected, but not quite, um, to navigate by the moon and the stars. It's so only there's a mathematician on board who is yes. doing that for that, six to twelve hours every day. That's right. Yeah, as and when they can make sightings. So, how much difference does the chronometer make between the first and second voyages? Now, Captain Cook's second voyage uh, on board the Resolution, that's where both methods get the sort of stamp of approval. Um, And the chronometer, or I should say timekeeper, because the term chronometer becomes standardised later on. But Cook refers to the timekeeper as a trusted friend, and he found it very useful indeed. So we're talking about an incredible technological revolution just happening in a couple of decades. Yeah, I suppose it, it, it was a long time coming, but yeah, it came 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 to fruition very quickly. What will what have you brought out here that is of particular interest to Australia? You have got some of the most important instruments of this period brought together. It's it's a really um, exciting experience in terms of Australian history. I'm delighted to say that we've brought along K one. Uh, which is so, on display. And so you, which is K1? K1 is um, a, the first copy of John Harrison's marine watch made by Larkham Kendall, hence the name K1. Um, Describe it. How big is it? Okay, so it's a pocket watch. It's about four, four and a half, five inches across. And it's a, it looks like a silver-cased pocket watch with a very beautifully decorate, decorated enamel dial. When you get inside the thing, it's got the most glorious movement. It's it's all gilded and nearly all of the details are profusely engraved. It's absolutely stunning and it, it's it's at the Australian National Maritime Museum outside of the case with the case next to it. So you can really uh, see. And it all represents the an extraordinary technological achievement because Harrison had had to get over all these different barriers. Like, for instance, at one stage, if you wound a watch, the watch stopped while you were winding it. And so he had to devise a a method of getting around that. There were all kinds of little technological breakthroughs just held in this one little watch case, right? That's right. And and when you look at the whole process, you know, of John Harrison's journey to that watch, um, he made a number of significant inventions, one being the bimetallic strip, which features in any thermostatic device today, the other being the caged roller bearing, as John Harrison called it, which is, you know, has has sort of become the modern ball bearing, ball race. Uh, which you find in anything with axles that whiz round, you know, be it skateboards, cars, washing machines, you name it. So some very valuable sort of output from John Harrison's work and, you know, not forgetting the timekeeper itself. Do you, in the age of the aeroplane, do you think that Australians have to some degree lost any awareness of just how much they were once dependent on the sea and on things like this? I, I think yeah, as collectively as the human race, we, we take so much for granted. We take accurate time completely for granted. It's on every device you can imagine, you know, on your cooker, on your phone. It's all around us. Whereas when you look back to this, you know, the 18th century history where the world is sort of becoming a smaller place, but very slowly, you know, finding the correct time took a great deal of skill, the right instrumentation, um, and and yeah, there was very good reason to do so when it comes to navigating safely. Thank you very much.
Rory McAvoy, curator of horology at London's National Maritime Museum at Greenwich, and Ships, Clocks and Stars, The Quest for Longitude is at the Australian National Maritime Museum in Sydney. You can hear a longer version of that interview with Rory 